Hi there, it's Ian here, and you're watching Grumpy Opinions, the show where I'm going to tell you all about what I think of films, TV shows, games, and life in general. Let's get on with the show. Outlander is the show where Claire, a 20th century English nurse, is lost in time in France trying to prevent the massacre of Culloden with the help of her 18th century Scottish husband Jamie and his friend Murtaugh. Episode 2, Not in Scotland Anymore, is the proper start of Claire's adventures in France. After last week's bustle, ship burning and smallpox, it's nice to see the loving couple, well, coupling lovingly. But, unfortunately, it's a nightmare, showing us Jamie's not at all over the rape and abuse he suffered last season at the hands of Black Jack Randall, and it's keeping him up all night, literally. So Claire's goes to the local French superdrug to get him some sleeping herbs from that guy that was in Delicatessen. Meanwhile, Jamie and Mert are both blowing off steam having a wee bit of sparring in a park, and it's clear that Mert has absolutely no love for the old alliance, but he wants to help Jamie, so he goes about and sets up a meeting with Bonnie Prince Charlie, and they get to meet him in a brothel of all of places, where the wee effeminate Italian dwarf, as Billy Connolly once called him, gets suckered into liking Jamie, because apparently Jamie's the only person who doesn't spend his whole time flattering him and telling him he's right, and he thinks that's genuine. And so, amidst a whole uncomfortable amount of prostitutes and dildos and a lot of deus vaulting, Jim gets unwittingly made Chuck's agent in soliciting help from the French king. And there are more introductions as we're shown Claire's new pal, a socialite called Louise de la Tour de Rohan, and her wee English friend or guest at her house, Mary Hawkins, and they're very helpful in getting Claire known and around in Paris, and they also help facilitate in getting Claire a big red dress, and then they're off to Versailles to meet the king, so the whole crew head there in a splendorous display of bad CGI and shonky compositing. And when they're there, they bump into an old pal of Jamie's, a young girl who he fought a duel over once, and he's a bit cagey about that, and that puts Claire's back right up, but luckily he gets hoist off to see a constipated king, who he recommends eats a bowl of porridge while Claire hits, gets hit on by a bloke from La Haine. Of course, Jamie sees this and ends up throwing the guy in the river. And it turns out that he's the Minister of Finance, the very man they planned to chat up and befriend when they were there. Luckily, it turns out he's a good sort, got a good sense of humour, and he doesn't take it all too seriously. And it's all going swimmingly, literally. And even Murtaugh starts to enjoy himself a bit, until, that is, Jamie starts to cock-block him. And just at that point, they spot the Duke of Sandringham. Wow, he's back. And it turns out he's also chatting up the royals for whatever his mysterious purposes are. And in tow, he has Black Jack's cough-ridden little brother, who drops the bombshell that old Jack is not only alive, but actually in pretty good fettle. Especially surprising after the cattle stampede he was in last season. Remember that? Hmm? And that leaves Claire shocked and staggers. And just as his fireworks start in the sky above the palace, the episode ends. So, what did I think? Well, I think the Paris looks amazing. And I think the choice of putting in a few French actors and new faces this season is a really good one. And that, as usual, on a technical level, stars have done a great bit of work. I mean, that dodgy CGI horse fountain aside. I mean, I also love that we got to see Jamie and Murtaugh not really fitting in in France and seeing that they're really rounded people who have prejudices and feelings. You know, they actually feel like real people. But to be honest, that's kind of all of the good I'm actually going to say on this episode. Yeah, folks, this is categorically, completely my least favourite episode of Outlander ever so far. Seriously. I mean, I'm going to be as fair as I can with my grumps, but they are many. So let's start near the beginning. Foreshadowing. Now, I get that this is the first full episode set in the 1740s, and a lot needs to be put in place. In France, I mean. But let's start with the apothecary scene. Now, that smacked of, this place and people will be important later, because otherwise, that was a totally superfluous scene. It really added nothing more than minutes to the plot. There's also, frankly, some really borderline racist stuff in this episode. Now, I get that it's cool to be racist towards the French, in TV terms at least. I mean, in real life, that's pretty not cool. I've got French friends, and that's not nice. But playing up the stereotypes of them being sex, crazed cheaters, and snooty, aloof people isn't anything new. And, but it actually felt a little bit forced, especially when we get hit with the hugely overdone leg and Brazilian waxing scene only a couple of minutes just before this whole business of a constipated king. Now, I'm not a historian, and some of this stuff might actually be quite realistic, but the problem is it made the show feel like I was watching Blackadder, but only not as funny or as clever, or like some other similar period comedy. I mean, season one did the odd bit of silly fun with things like the f- farty fiscal and other little laughs. But this felt like the balance was actually off. And what's more, if this is important and Jamie's going to become friends with the king on account of offering him some porridge or some nonsense, I might actually cry. No, like really, I might actually cry. Let's also talk about something that I didn't hate, but that I don't think translated properly from the page to the screen, and that's Claire's red dress. Right, I get it. It's a big scarlet, big hip dress with a crazy cleavage, and it's really striking, and it's actually a really nice dress. But... 
We're given no reason in the show to understand why it's important. None at all. That's totally glossed over. I mean, there's a one tiny offhand line given. But what's more, the actual earn an incredible detail on the other dresses, such as the one that Louise de la Rohan wears in the opening shots of the episode, actually looked far more interesting and far nicer dresses. I mean, it, to me at least. I mean, I'm no expert. As a result, it meant close to nothing to me other than making me feel a bit like Claire looked totally out of place. It was a bit like somebody wearing a leather miniskirt and a bra with chrome studs on it to a cocktail party where everyone else is in like top and tails. It's just gaudy and attention seeking. I mean, again, this is presumably for book fans going by like stuff I've seen on Twitter and Facebook about people talking about that dress and why it's important. But this is the thing. You need to include that information in the show. And if you don't, it just ends up being meaningless. I mean, this is the first time I've actually ever watched an episode of Outlander and felt like I've been missing great tracks of story. It's like they picked five scenes out of maybe four or five chapters and just ditched everything else and gone, this is the important stuff going forward. Now, that's a, maybe a necessary part of the adaptation process. And the show was still good. I mean, it's still better than a lot of shows out there. But I felt let down. And I still hope that the season gets back on track next week. I mean, it wasn't terrible, but it has been better before. Admit it, folks. But anyway, till next week, I've been Ian, and these have been my grumpy opinions.